things that I have laid out there. But I'm not telling you what it means. All right, so uh, a couple quick notes. Um, I was kind of like going through notes of what we talked about and stuff like that. Um, two things to kind of think about uh, that I just, I thought were good points to make that I didn't make. So I thought I'd bring them up for you, um, which is uh, columns are typically arrays um, and lists and rows are typically lists. Can anybody tell me why that's a good rule of thumb and a good way to remember it? Exactly. So a column always has the same data type, or you're going to have a bad day. But you know, theoretically, they could be different, but they really, really shouldn't be, right? Um, and then a row will typically have different data types, right? You know, it'll have like a string that's like the name of something, right? And then it will have you know some value that's a number. You know, maybe it's floats, maybe it's integers, etc. So with arrays, they have to be all the same data type. With lists, they can be mixed data types. So when you're using, when you're dealing with columns, an array makes sense. When you're dealing with rows, a list makes sense. And for me, at least, it's a good way to remember the reverse as well, is that how do you remember which, what the difference between an array and a list is, is the type of content it can carry. Um, so uh, that's why I thought it was, like I said, interesting um, and hopefully helpful to you. All right, one of the things we didn't get to the last time was grouping by, uh, multiple columns. Just make sure I'm on the right do wacky. Um, and what's that? Excuse me. Ah, wrong button. So, all right. Run that stuff. All right. So uh, we didn't have that much data in our in our survey, and for this example, uh, I wanted more data, so I'm using uh, one of the surveys from that other class. Uh, for this. So that's why you see me loading this particular survey. Um, but, you know, it's essentially the same thing. Oh, I just realized my cheat sheet's not open. So give me one second. All right. So let's say what we want to do is, okay, so a group on a table, right? Um, just kind of, you know, kind of crashes stuff together, right? Um, and then usually you'll get a count of whatever the, uh, you know, the thing that you crashed together is, how many of them there were. So does anybody know the syntax for that? If I wanted to just do a simple group. So survey, oh, actually, let me, I thought this had a print statement in it. Um, so here's the survey, the other one. So uh, we have, uh, you know, what year the student is, um, whether they're extroverted or introverted, um, the number of tech C's, uh, the hours of sleep, handedness, and then sleeping position. Okay. So if I wanted to group by, say, um, let's say a year, how would I do that? Yeah. So there's a D in there, right? Um, so group by you know I'm using other people's data sets here, right? A lot of the time. Um, but one thing I'll point out uh, quickly is let, let, unless I have a really good reason to, um, I try to consistently or be very very consistent about my pacing. Okay, so. I will pretty much exclusively use lowercase because, you know, one less character, I don't have to hold the shift down, right? Um, because then I don't have to remember whether it's year, right? Or lowercase year, uh, and it will not work if it's the wrong one. Um, so like number of text E there really annoys me, okay? Because it's not consistent. So just kind of keep that in mind. I recommend trying to be as consistent as possible. Obviously you'll be regularly working with data of other people's. Um, and so you may not have that control. But if you're really going to be working on something for a while, this is why a relabel is worth it, right? When you want to go and make a bunch of changes, um, that way you're less likely to have to go back and look at what the column names are over and over again. Or the other thing I will actually typically do is actually grab all the column names um, and put them all open like notepad on the side 
and just copy and paste them there uh, and then go back and grab them every time so that I don't have to make mistakes regularly that are stupid and I don't have to repeat them. Um, okay, so let's take a wild guess. Um, and if I wanted to group by both handedness, okay, so left handed, right handed, or both. Um, and what was the example we have here? I think sleep position. Um, yeah, so sleep position. Uh, how would I do that? I have not mentioned this in class yet. You may have seen it in the reading. Um, but if you take a wild guess, I bet you'll rewrite. Any guesses? Not even a crazy guess? Come on. I live for crazy guesses. All right. This is what I would try. Um, and trust me, half the time I will try something before looking up the documentation um, because it's faster. And that's what I thought. We need to show. Oh, no, sorry. I make this mistake a lot. Um, so, this is why you need to learn about lists. Okay, so the input. Entirely wrong, sorry. And I think, did I get away with this? No. You get double for that. Oh, for see, when he fixes it for you, sometimes it's annoying. All right, let's see if we can get away with it without a show. Yes, okay. So this is part of the reason why you learn lists is because this does not take it as multiple parameters, like most of the things that we've used thus far. It takes it as a list. So if you were going to say be taking a test sometime soon, maybe in the middle of the semester, this would be a really good thing for someone to want to know whether or not you actually understood it, right? So hint, hint. But so at the as a result, right, the outputs we get are you know interesting, right? So we get um, Kind of over and over again, we get the you know the MD people and then what their uh, preferred sleeping side is, uh, and then how many of those people there are. Um, the thing is here, right? And this is going to easily lead into the next thing we want to talk about, which is a pivot table. Um, what about this table is like difficult to consume? What do you think? Like what might I do to this that would make it easier to read, or what what would be nice if it was there? Yeah. Right. So so you know, can we restructure this so that it's like more like um, you know, kind of more like one to one mapping in a sense, rather than you know. You're grouping all the votes, but you kind of want to you want to see them more laid out, right? Um, as well as there's just a ton of duplicate information here, right? So you have to like read all of these words, even though they're the same. And so it's also very difficult to say to ask a question like, you know, are uh, more left-handed people right-side sleepers than you know ambidextrous people or whatever? So because they're not near each other, so it's kind of hard to look at the data. So this can be useful. But we have another tool called a pivot table. Um, one of these days, I got to look up like the word origin for this because pivot doesn't really like make sense to me. Um, so, has anybody ever used a pivot table in something like Excel or another spreadsheet? Okay. Um, I will tell you right now that uh, like I do a lot of this. I was like, you know, a guru in Excel, still had very, very hard troubles doing pivot tables in there. Um, there's something about the UI that I find just not conducive to brain or something. So what we can do though, is very easily, and I'll point out the, the obvious here, right? We are not passing a list here. And we can take a very nice function called pivot. And as you can see, this gives us way less duplicated information, right? 
it kind of allows us to more easily compare the like the similar things to each other um, because we can kind of look, you know, if we're interested in, about people who sleep on their left side, you know, we can go down that second or third column, depending, um, and compare the, you know, whether they're more right or left-handed, for example, or if we're interested in handedness, we can look at, you know, do they tend to sleep on the right side or the left side or whatever. Uh, obviously, this particular data set, you know, I don't, I don't think there's a correlation between handedness and, you know, the side of the, uh, you know, your sleeping position. Um, but you get the idea is that it makes it a little easier to consume it when you have kind of those two basically what you have is a, a uh, like a column row and a, a like a row and a column um and i have a better graphic for that in a second um but we can also do things that are a little more sophisticated so we can actually add to the pivot table so instead of just kind of blindly taking the counts right we can actually say hey you know what we actually want to look at extroversion based on the handedness and the sleeping position um but we don't even want to just we don't want to take that we don't want like a count of extroversion or something that wouldn't make a lot of sense so instead we're going to take the average uh of those data elements and use that so that we can see our people who for example are ambidextrous and sleep on their right side, they tend to be in the middle of the road on extroversion, right? Um, and like I said, there's not a whole lot here. I mean, I guess uh, people who are ambidextrous and sleep on their back tend to be very extrovert. I don't know if that I would write a paper about that, but you get the idea, right? Is it tells us uh, a little bit more information. And that function down there, um, it's like you have a lot of variation. It's kind of like the apply function, right? You can do like a sum or a you know a mean or a max or whatever. Um, average is often the one you want to use just because it kind of makes the most sense. Um, but you can kind of do whatever you want. Um, but notice that is a name variable down uh, name parameter down there, right? So collect and then another one that's values. Um, you know, positionally they might be right. I have no idea. I tend to use named uh, parameters kind of as much as I can unless it's a really obvious thing because it makes it clear for the next person who's reading it then they then they don't have to know whether what the position is in the third spot in the fourth spot that makes sense so it's a little simpler to consume later um but we can kind of i can find my mouse um Um, but we can also, I mean, we can do some of that with groupings, uh, you know, we can get to some of the same data, but it's just a little bit different. Um, the thing I would also point out here, and I think I mentioned this last time, is that if the data element on a group doesn't really make sense, it just goes blank, okay? So there's no way to average those words, right? Um, so as a result, you just get a blank. Um, and then you know there's no way to average sleep positions, uh, where the pivot table will tend to show you uh, zeros or. Um, does anybody here know what uh, like NAN means? It's actually going to come up later too, so it's going to mention it. Um, it actually comes from math, uh, and think of it as an acronym. What happens when you divide by zero? Does anybody remember? All right, not a number. Okay, so if you see NAN, it means not a number. So, for example, the average of sleep position is not a number. Um, it's just that group handles it by throwing it away or hiding it or whatever. Um, and pivot will handle it by zeros, which can be confusing, right? Um, or uh, by uh, using not a number, depending on scenarios. All right, so. Let's see. Oh, oops. Yeah, so, okay, I want to go back to the slides. Um, oh, we actually jumped ahead a little bit. So the group method uh, can aggregate all rows that share a combination of values in multiple columns. Um, and then 
which you column do you want to group by, and then how to combine the values, right? So that last example I showed you was I want to use an average, right? And then pivot tables. So yeah, this is what I was struggling to try to say before. So basically your column A, right, becomes the columns and your column B becomes the rows, okay? Um, so when you're passing, I don't know if there's a good example here, but when you're passing those parameters, you know, it's the, it's basically your column first, then your row, then your value, um, which is, if you think about it, the same as how you do it when you like construct a table. So it's pretty consistent. It's just that's the thing to remember. Um, and then, do it all point out here. Um, yeah, and then as I kind of said, these are you know the values are what things you want to aggregate if you don't want to aggregate count, um, and then what you want to collect with. So you want average or sum or whatever, um, and that's pivot tables. So like I said, I think they're very easy to use when you're doing something like Python. I think they're very hard to use when you're using something like Excel. Um, so, you know, your mileage may vary, but the concept is exactly the same in any tool that claims to be a pivot table. And so that's why it can be a little bit handy. Um, all right, we are going fairly fast there. But. So what often comes up, right, and I talked about this a little bit, is when to use a group and when to use a pivot, okay? so. Um, when you're doing groups, um, you want a combination of group variables per row. So that example where I showed a bunch of different values, um, let me flip back to it for a second. So when you're seeing something like this, where you wanna see a bunch of things at once, a group works a lot better because a pivot table can only show you one output. Usually you can get really crazy, but normally speaking, when you're talking about grouping, you can, um, you, you know, you can see a bunch of things about that characteristic that you're interested in uh, at once. Um, you know, so we can easily see the sleep average is seven hours, right, for regular people, and they tend to text seven, slightly more than seven people a day. Whereas a pivot table does a much better job when you want to um, compare, like, two uh, data elements, right, you know, column, two columns. Um, and get to a particular point. So this example that we have here, you know, as a lot of them are, is, you know, it's not that complicated, right? Um, but you can imagine that pivot up there where it's the 12, right? Um, you know, if that was if that was big, right? It's a lot easier to try to understand the relationship between two columns in your data using a pivot table than it would be like this, or like that original example where you have all that repeated information. So Basically, if you want to, if the goal of whatever you're trying to do is to look at uh, multiple kind of values, uh, like this one, then you probably want to use groups, even if you do a, a multi uh, column group. Um, and if you want to look at kind of a specific value, but in a lot of different relations or in different relationships, then you probably want to pivot. Does that make sense? All right. Uh, there will sort of be a quiz on this, so. Let's see. Yeah, and like I said, I think this zero thing is particularly dangerous. So just keep that in mind, um, you know, especially if your values are, you know, just above and below zero, this can get a little weird. Uh, so you want to be careful of that. Um, yeah, but at the same time, so a pivot is not very flexible, right, in the sense that it can only do one thing. It can, you know, one column versus another, show you the values. Uh, whereas the grouping one is a lot more flexible, but can be really busy. All right. So um, let's talk about joins first. Um, as you can see in this picture, a join is exactly what it sounds like. Okay. You are going to take table A and combine it with table B to get table C, all right? What is the problem with combining table A and, it, and B to get C? What do you need to be able to do that and, and be correct? I 
tell me a characteristic of the data that is in col uh, col in table A and table B to be able to combine them or join them. Yeah. Okay, so so you're pointing out problems that are actually solved by the same problem you're talking about. Um, okay, so so what you did notice, right, is that this cafe name is in both, right? And that's what's important is that we are now have a linking some piece of data that links the two together. However, as you point out, um, Cafe Nero appears twice here, right? Um, and only once up there. So what does that mean? Okay. Well, if you notice, it means that it's going to duplicate that data where the overlap occurs, right? So, but the important thing is, well, that's important, but the thing I was getting at was um, you must have some data element that links the two together, even if it's um, like not in the same number of rows, that's okay because it will assume that, so Cafe Nero for whatever reason has a 10% discount across the board. It doesn't matter what drink it is. So therefore for all of Cafe Nero's drinks, you're gonna have a 10% discount, okay? Um, where it gets kind of funky, right? Is if you have Cafe Nero in this table twice, right? So you don't know how to combine that with does the let's say it was twelve percent, right? Does the twelve percent on espresso on latte, or is it actually twenty two percent, right? So that's usually bad. Um, that's one of those scenarios where uh, the you know the the functions may refuse to operate, but they may also not refuse to operate. So it's something you got to be a little bit careful of. Make sure that your data mapping is good. Okay, and this is uh, there's a whole like kind of subcategory when we talk about data science. Basically, it's called like data cleaning, where we need to make sure of things like, you know, does Cafe Nero have more than one entry in there, and if it does, where does that coupon apply? Okay, so something to be concerned of, or aware of. Um, you know, most of the time the data sets we're going to give you are going to be pretty clean, um, and. Oh, and then kind of just lastly, so how does it work? Okay, well, so you take the table that you want to start with, um, which is this table. I guess I should have labeled them now that I think about it. So the drinks table, and then I'm going to join that on this column with that table, which is called discounts, using, and notice the columns don't have the same name, okay? So here it's called cafe and there it's called location. But they have the same kind of data or the same, yeah, same kind of data. So they don't have to have the same name, but all those other caveats apply. So you just have to be able to link them together. It means you can do weirder stuff too, right? This is not a good example of that, but you know, so there's there's no requirement that the columns be named the same thing or even being being thought of as the same thing. It's just will they map? Okay, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. You know, for example, like let's say we had a bunch of country data here, okay, um, and then we had data we wanted to combine with it that was state data, okay, but the states where maybe this is country and states, something like that, right? So we can combine those things because it doesn't really matter as long as they logically make sense, right? As long as they can actually map. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Um, sorry, wires in the way. Um, and for how we can play around with it. Oh, and then one thing to keep in mind, right, is that if you notice, this result is not sort of the same way as either, well, it might be the same as that one, but it's accidental, okay? Whatever this column is that you were kind of working with, that's the one that's gonna, the new table is gonna be sorted by, okay? Obviously, unless you change the story.
All right, so is anyone following along? So we'll talk about joins again some more. I guess I should have done this first. Um, I was thinking there was an example here that was joins, but I think there it's not till later. Yeah. Okay, so if we have this table of skyscrapers that we've seen before, um, and we want to know for each of the cities, right? So New York City, Chicago, uh, Atlanta's in there. I know what's the tallest building for each material. So how might we answer that question? And you do not need to join for this. I kind of jumped ahead and jumped back. So we want to try and work it out. You should have all the, uh, you should have the CSV and, and the template and stuff. Any ideas? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. And anything else? Uh, sort of. Um, okay, so I'm going to do it slightly differently than you did because I have a cheat sheet, so it makes it easier. Um, but it's pretty close to what you said. Um, oh, I think I need a, uh, not yet. So, however, I don't want height, right? I want an operation on height. Don't make that operation be right. Oops, we got a comma. All right, so what we're going to do is grab just the material city and height, just so that the grouping doesn't get screwed up, right? So we only want those three columns. Then we're going to group it by both city and material so that we can say, okay, you know, for New York City that's mixed composite, get the height, okay? But I don't want the average height. I don't want somehow all the height. I don't want a count of the heights, right? What I want is the tallest building. So therefore I want the max height. That makes sense. And so now we can see that Atlanta has a, I assume this is in feet, um, you know, a concrete building is 264 feet. Uh, I can't remember, it might be meters. Um, 264 feet does not seem very tall. Um, so, but you can kind of see they're grouped together. Now we have, you know, the various cities, right? And then for each city, we have the different, um, you know, materials and then the heights. Um, all right, so we have another one. Um, so, which is the, what's the height difference between the tallest steel building and the tallest concrete building? Um, oh, before we do that though, we'll talk about the difference between, wait. yeah, um, oh, we do that. Wait, am I in the right place? Yeah, so let's do this real quick, sorry. Um, I thought it was. So another way to look at this, right, which might be easier, which I think this is what this is gonna do, is we can look at it as a pivot table. And this might be more what we're looking for, 
right? Because then again, we don't have that repeated information over and over again. Instead, we can say, okay, Atlanta has a 264 foot building, Austin has a 208 of concrete type, right? So this case might be a better choice to use a pivot table, um, but they both can accomplish the same goal, right? So we're actually comparing one column, city, to another column, which is uh, whatever it's called, material, material um, using a value of height, but then driving the max, right? So in this case, the pivot table is probably better. All right, so going back down here. So let's think about how would we do, um, for the city, the height difference between the tallest steel building and the tallest concrete building. Okay, because I I'm going to guess here, but I think steel buildings can be regularly taller than concrete buildings, at least you know guessing as to construction materials. So, and as a, I don't know if it's a hint per se, um, but we can start with the pivot table that we had before, right? So I stuck this in this variable. So now I have a pivot table that has material city and height with the maxes. Maybe what we want to do is just add a column to that. Anyone have any ideas? Yeah. Use. No, so apply is more uh, for like you want a particular function to apply to a whole column. Um, to add a column, we use with underscore column. All right. So we'll we'll write that much. Ah. My copying and paste skills are poor. All right, so we have a column called difference that we want to add. So how might we get the um, what do we call it? The uh, steel versus the concrete heights. Did you raise your hand? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. All right. Well, we already know the maxes, right? Because they're in the table. So we can grab. Oops. Whoa. I know what this is. Oh, that is so much bigger. I don't even know what I did. Um, so we already know the maxes are here in the table. So we can just subtract the one from the other, right? So we can say, oh, okay, I know I have the city and I know I have the steel height and the concrete height. So I can just subtract the two, except that I want the difference, right? So I'm gonna throw an absolute value around that by just doing abs. And then assuming my friends and stuff are right. Um, I can see the differences. What is going on? Um, 
I really have no idea what it is. Uh, so because I already knew the concrete and the seal heights because I grabbed the, the maxes before and I put them in that pivot table, I can now add a column, right? So now this pivot table is just another table, right? It's not special. So I can just now start manipulating against that table. So if I want to know something with the difference between the concrete and steel lights, I can just add it on like I would anything else, uh, just with this subtraction. All right. So we have one more. Um, oh, and then uh, the other example I had in the cheat cheat sheet is I can then obviously sort by difference. Wow. That's what happens when you put your fingers on the keyboard row. So now it's just sorted by the difference so that I can look for the, you know, the smallest or biggest difference or whatever I'm looking for. Um, all right, so one more. So if we want to generate a table of the names of the oldest buildings for each material for each city. So if you go back, I think it was just called Sky. So we have the name and we want the oldest of each material and the age here is obviously the higher the age the older it is all right so what might the first thing we want to do there be So if you think about it, right, what's what's a uh, like the last question or the question before the last question, right? Asked about heights. Okay, and so what did we do? We grabbed the city, we pivoted it against the types, and then we pulled the heights, right? So basically, we're asking pretty much the exact same question, except for age. So what should we do? Do you know? You know, exactly. So we basically do exactly the same thing we did before, except instead of max height, we're going to max age. So we grab, you know, we make another pivot table. Material is going to be across the top, so it's going to be down the side then the value is going to be age and we want the max. So we grab that. Um, and that isn't going to print because I forgot to put something that will print it. Um, and that's all there is to it, right? Um, so the thing that bothers me a little bit about this kind of thing, right, is that um, it doesn't tell us what this number is. So you want to make sure you put some sort of label on the table or whatever to indicate uh, 57 what right um but that's that's kind of how you go about the problem um so that's why pivot tables are so handy um like i said it's important to remember that a pivot table just becomes a table so you can do new things to it once you have created it all right so jumping back to where we were um and oops that is, how did I get? All right, I had a synchronization error here. Um, so what we're gonna do here is, hold on, I forgot to run this up here. Um, so I have our drinks table, which um, you saw me show in the slides, but now here it is as a table, right? It has the coffees and it has the cafe and the price um and then we want to make a table excuse me with those discounts all right and we just do that by saying with columns and then adding a column name and then an array that indicates what the values are for that column and then we print it out so so we saw this a minute ago how do i make a joined version of those two things. So how do I join those two tables? It was in the slide.
So what do we start off with? Kind of like the root, right? And then in parentheses, for the columns that have the common information, so that would be cafe, comma, discount, comma, exactly. So so just to be a little clear, like the this is kind of relabeling, right? So we get this, let me print this. So, oh, sorry. So this is grabbing the other table and the column within it. So this table here, um, I got a little ahead of myself. Um, and so now we've combined the cafes and the drinks and the prices and our, our discount or our coupons. Um, now, now we have a joined table, right? And much like the pivot table, this is just a table now, right? It's, there's nothing special about it. Um, and to some extent, one thing to remember here is it also doesn't know anything about what it used to be, okay? So there's no way to go from the combined back to drinks without manually going, you know, selecting those individual columns, right? Um, so what if we wanted to, actually create a discount column. So in other words, um, what if we want to add a column that is the correct, like the new price, including the coupon for those drinks? How do you think we would go about that? We got an idea for how we might approach that. All right, so who can tell me how to calculate for the espresso Cafe Nero what the new price would be? Somebody know how to do discounts? Anybody ever worked retail? I managed to avoid it. Yeah. So, okay, so it's, wait, let me just, yeah. So it's the price of the thing, right? Subtracting the discount. So, um, so yeah, so one minus um, the coupon, but divided by a hundred. Um, I was like, yeah, brain broken there for a minute. Okay. So we know how to get that. So then how would we create a column with that data? Right, so we know, uh, I, can't, I can't put part of it up um, without giving the whole thing away. So how do I, so what would you recommend we do to get, um, now we need all of those new prices, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. 
Well, let's do it in two steps because it's simpler. So I need to apply that thing to all the, the things, uh, all the uh, values. So what I can do is I can take that calc, right? But I can grab the column and because it's a set of numbers, I can do it kind of all at once, right? And what am I gonna get back for that? An array, right? So good gracious. Um, no, not printing it. So just counted back. So now we have an array of those prices. So then as you're kind of starting to get to, right, we can then use the width column and add it to our existing one by taking the discounted fraction, right? So, so like, like this is the number to be applied, right? And then we apply it to the price and then we stick it in a column called discounted price. Um, and there we go. So now we have, um, the original price and then the discount and then the actual new price um, for when you know the coffee shop is busy and nobody wants to calculate that on the fly. All right, so one other thing I wanted to show you um, because this actually can be very, very useful, but I think is not something people think of that you can do. Um, even though this is not the best example, I'll try to come up with a better example. So sometimes it's helpful to actually join something to itself, okay? Um, and like I said, this is not the most awesome example of this, but as you can see, it totally works, right? There's no, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, it can be weird, right? Now I have a bunch of potentially repeated data, but uh, it is useful in some scenarios to actually recombine something back onto itself. Um, you know, uh, I just before class, I couldn't think of a good example. So um, just kind of be aware that there's no, there's nothing stopping you from, uh, you know, joining something onto itself. All right, that might be the last slide. I can't remember if there's one more. Um, yeah, so that's the announcement slide. All right, so the tab I forgot to prep in advance. Uh, how many here have ever used Kahoot before? All right, cool. How many here like Kahoot? Oops, I'm not looking. Um, I think it's fun. So, of course, all my windows went away. Come on. All right, so I think a lot of people raised their hands. Um, so you know the drill, go to the website and then you type in this code. Please, oh, sorry, I should have said this first. Please use your real name, um, like, you know, first name, last initial, totally fine, um, because there will be prizes. So try to win. Um, All right, so who has anybody not done Kahoot's before? All right, I'll try to briefly explain it. So we're actually doing two different question types in this. So the idea is basically it puts the question up, all right? And then the kind of traditional one is what they call a quiz, which is um, the question will be at the top. Uh, there usually be some sort of image that goes with it. 
uh, and then there will be um, like colored and uh, iconographic boxes with labels uh, that are the answer. Okay, so I will give you a hint. Oh, you know what? Uh, I wanted to randomize this, but I'm not sure if it's going to be randomized. Well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, so uh, yeah, so if you if you can't see the colors, there are icons that indicate what colors are. It, they'll go up here to indicate what the text is, and then it will say on your phone or whatever you're doing it on, um, just the icon or the color. So you click on the right one. That's one type. The other type is actually an answer. Okay. Uh, it will. They're all single word, um, and basically they're functions. So they're pretty. You know, you should be able to get them correct. I do not know if case matters, but as I told you earlier, I always use lowercase unless there's a really good reason to use anything else. Uh, so assume lowercase. All right, everybody in? All right, cool. So let's start. So it says graphs and groups, but then I added in some functions. So it's got some other stuff too. Um, I suppose I should have added something about cats. All right. Um, so what percent of the survey participants sleep more than six hours? And hopefully you all can read that. What type of graph would I use to figure out the answer to that? And you have seven seconds. All right, not bad, not bad. All right, and then I think, I don't know if we get a leaderboard yet. All right, so we're starting at leaderboards. Extract a column from a table as a table. And this would be a function one, but it's choosable. Uh, one of these is not a real function at all. I just made it up. This is my picture representing extract. I do have children. That's my excuse for parent joke, as it were. All right. Uh, oh, one person did go for my uh, made up one. All right, look at that, changing it up. I always like when there's a lot of change in the scoreboard and it's always more fun. Um, there are 300 questions, so we'll be here for a while, right? You totally agree with me, Tony. All right, so this one you have to type. So a function to change the order of a table. Uh, hopefully it's not a huge pain to type, I don't know. I've never tried this type before. But it does give you longer, so. I also have to get it to crash the picture with the thing, putting up the question first is kind of so. All right. Oh, nice. Uh, that's funny. All right. Uh, so we got a few people got that one. All right, a little bit of change. Uh, I like the fire icon, which means that uh, you're moving on up. All right, a function to, a function to filter in rows of a table. Um, it's very difficult to write these and not actually use the word that is the function. So this is how do you, you know, pull out some words in a table. Right, sorry, pull out some rows in a table. So yeah, if the language is a little stilted, like I said, keep in mind, it's just really hard not to use the actual word. All right, that one was tough. All right, we need to make sure we know that one. All right, function to find out what sort of thing is in a name. Clearly this is not random. Right, so a name being a name or a variable or whatever. How do I find out what kind of thing is in there? There may be a hint getting revealed on the screen if anybody in this class knows what that thing is.
All right. All right, that's a pretty good five correct answers in a row. I like it. Um, obviously had a little trouble at the beginning, but making progress. All right, we need some like, you know, we need some people who are down here to jump up. So come on, you gotta, you gotta like knock out the leaders. All right, so this is, I should have made sure that I was combined. So this is another graph question. So which type of graph should you use to figure out um, do extroverts tend to text more people? A bar gram, a histogram, a scatter. I should have made up some graph types. I figured that was too mean. All right, pretty good. Scatter. All right. Well, at least you're recognizing what you still need to learn before the midterm. All right, we need we need more fluctuation. All right, are there more left-handed or ambidextrous people? Which type of graph should we use? So, you know, we want to know if there's more left-handed or both, right? Oh, that one, that one looked easy. Nice. All right. Do have it do any damage to the leaderboards? No, not really. All right, which graph would I use to density of museums per state? This was, there's a, I'll tell you at the end about cable or pallet, pebble. All right. All right. Oh, that was good too. All right. Scatter plot's probably my favorite. Uh, look at that. There we go. Got a couple of people getting it wrong. Then we got somebody who's got three in a row. And then which type of graph do I use for uh, sleeping on your back? I suppose you still have 20 seconds. I don't think it starts when it first puts up questions. All right, so remember categorical versus numerical data is how you get to these answers. All right. Oh, that one definitely needs some work. Okay, how many people do most people text? Which type of graph? See, it'd be a lot more fun if they were more randomized, right? They'd be mixed up together, but I don't know. I didn't know how to hit the button to make them random. I just randomly moved them around, which wasn't apparently enough. All right, if you guys all get them in fast, right? It also jumps ahead. So speed, speed. Oh, look at that. All right. All right, so group or a pivot to categorize revenue. So this is the museums and the revenue they make. Would it, better, would it be better to look at it with a pivot or a group? Yeah, that one actually probably could have been phrased a little better. So I would say that was a little bit of a wash in retrospect. All right, almost done. We only have four left. So if we want to know how many museums make more than zero dollars, um, which sadly was a lot of them, uh, how would we look at that from a graph perspective? All right, histogram, remember numericals, numerics, sorry. Uh, that's how you uh, think about histograms. Oh, original leader back on fire. All right, a pivot compares categories, true or false? All right, it's false, right? It's numbers. 
you can't stick categories in there. Left-handed, for example, is not going to go in that value area in the pivot table. All right. Let's keep going. Should I use a group or a pivot to find out how many museums are in each state? So can you all read that in the back? You can? Okay. Just if I do this again, I'll know what size kind of to think about. All right, so that one definitely needs some work on that one. So um, yeah, it would be tough to do that with a pivot table because you're not really comparing things, right? You're, you're just looking at all the museums. All right. Oh, new people all together on the leaderboard. All right, only two left. All right, so this column doesn't actually exist, right? But you'd have to calculate it to do expenses. Um, so revenue minus income is the expenses, right? Because revenue is how much you take in, income is how much you made, um, and so therefore expenses. Nice. All right. So yes, when you're comparing things together, uh, often a pivot table makes more sense. All right, last question, here we go. And which graph would I use to understand museum revenue by state? And so I wanna know, you know, does Arkansas make more money in museums than Massachusetts? And the reason that uh, these are all uh, like American based is because the uh, data set I found was US museum. All right, so, that would definitely a little bit more work, right? We should definitely be looking that stuff up. Let's see what the final outcome looks like. I think that was the last one, right? Yes. All right. So in third place, Jaimu. Yes, I said that right. Uh, James. And then finally, I think it's going to be Amani. Nice job. All right. So if you're in the top three, uh, the top one gets to come and pick. Then the top two gets to come and pick one of the other two, and then the top, the last person gets to pick the last one. Cool. Um, but I think that's it for today. Um, I'm going to leave that so I remember who won. Um, and then just as a quick reminder, right, change things around a little bit. So October 7th is actually.